What if you want to switch an entire business over to Linux desktop? I've gotten some emails in the past about switching everything over to Linux desktop, and I've seen even big countries like Germany switch to Linux desktop for a time. And I wanted to kind of address this point because I don't think anybody's really truly transitioned completely to Linux desktop. I mean, heck, you even see like uh, Linux Foundation members using um, Macintoshes and things that aren't Linux desktop. And you, you see all over the place where where you'll have the occasional like developer on Linux desktop and uh, other people that are really uh, familiar with tech uh, on Linux desktop, but it's typically considered a hobbyist tool. And I wanted to go over how we could take it from that hobbyist tool to just full enterprise usage of Linux desktop. And that's what I'm covering in today's video. So this is my method of how I would address this. Now, I would assume that the business needs like Microsoft Office and maybe even some Adobe functionality, uh, all these applications that Windows users would miss, but adding those to a Linux desktop in the form of what's called app streaming. And I've set up this type of thing in a business before and it works extremely well. So I wanted to address it in this video as you know a possibility just to kind of get people's brains working as far as what in a complete switchover would look like, or at least a hybrid switchover before a full switch. This video is brought to you by CDN77, the content delivery network used by space agencies and CentOS. I also am using this on ChrisTitus.com to speed up my website. So if you're interested in this, click the link in the description. So first off, I wanted to give kind of proof of concept. So we're going to switch over to the desktop. I'm going to go over app streaming just so you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like, what it is. However, what I'm going to be doing is more covering the small business aspect of the app streaming because I can't set up an entire enterprise setup here in the studio, mainly because I don't have a lot of the licensing for Citrix Zen app and, and Zen desktop, which would be my choice for enterprise. So if you have 10,000 users or more as a business, uh, the Citrix solution I find is the absolute best when it comes to app streaming or bringing Windows applications into non-Windows environments. You can stream to tablets, you can stream to Linux desktop, you can stream to Macs, you can take it pretty much anywhere in the world, which is pretty darn powerful. So that's where it's used today. It's not really used for this application, but it'd be very easy to use it. So in the interim, I'm going to show you kind of like a SMB type setup because a small business wouldn't be able to afford Citrix Zen app and Zen desktop. These licenses typically range in the five digits. So usually around 10 to $20,000 is what your typical thing would go to. And that doesn't include setup and configuration as someone like me would have to come out and really donate uh, probably a good week setting up and, and really uh, getting all the bugs and kinks worked out. So this would probably be another 10000 and probably in labor is what I'd allocate for a typical business doing a full Citrix rollout. But with all that said, let's jump over on there. And I'm going to show you basically the inner workings of Microsoft Windows remote app functionality, where you can basically take these remote apps and push them directly onto Linux desktop. So uh, I'll show that. And this, this way is pretty much free using a lot of uh, tools that are available to us. So let's demonstrate some of the most basic functionalities. Now, here's your basic Linux desktop, but let's say you want to run an application from Windows. I'm gonna go ahead and I've not made a shortcut for this yet, but I just kind of wanted to illustrate how seamless remote app capabilities are. Remote app is just fantastic. Utilizing free RDP in, in a remote app server, you can easily launch Windows applications. So this would give you the capabilities to use Notepad++ is what I'm showcasing here, but most people would want like Office and those types of things in, in this environment. So here's a quick example of like a text editor. And then I also want to kind of showcase other like line of business applications. And for this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do like my virtualization uh, Windows only application. I'm going to go ahead and run that on Linux. Now, going back to this command, I'll go ahead and break it down for you. It's using free RDP, which is an open source project to interface with uh, Microsoft's remote desktop protocol. It uses the username administrator 
it has this password, which is extremely secure, password one. And then it launches the app, which is alias is Notepad++. And then it connects to the server, which is this guy right here. And then it goes ahead and maps the home directory from this local machine. So that's the basis of this. Now, you could deploy this in a big environment or a small one. This is probably more meant for a small business because it's so openly available. Where if you're in an enterprise, you'd probably want that Citrix solution I talked about earlier because Citrix is just so much cleaner and it's easy to deploy in a, just a massive environment. I, I've loved Citrix farms. It's just very expensive and that's why uh, this is a solution for small business. So I already showcased Notepad++, but there is also another one and we can just change the alias just to kind of show you here. And it's XCP uh, for this one and it launches this Windows app directly from my server. So this is all well and good for this, but I want to actually pipe over to the server. And if you're a system admin and you're familiar with uh, server or Windows Server 2008 R2 and in, in past that, it has that remote application capability. So pretty much any Windows server can do this. Uh, however, you, you can host it in one area and just know that, hey, uh, you can launch all your apps from there. And you, it can even be in the cloud, so you don't actually have a, a physical server in your location. So this is this application, but let's go ahead, close this out. All right, with this closed out, we'll go ahead and launch over into the server. Now this is a rather old server. It's uh, probably my favorite server edition for Microsoft when it comes to Windows Server 2008 R2. And I've already deployed Remote App Manager in here. Now I don't want to go over the whole re remote app application in installed just because it's a little bit cumbersome and if you're going this route, no, you probably will need someone like me or another system admin to install Remote App and get it working properly. But with this, I can add pretty much any application. Now I have like Calculator, Notepad++, WinSCP, and XCP Center. And I can launch any of those from my terminal in Linux. But let's say we want to add another one. Let's say a, probably a more common one would be Adobe Acrobat. And we'll just install Adobe Acrobat real fast. I happen to have the offline installer right here. And we'll just go ahead and install Adobe Acrobat and make a little shortcut for it. Okay, with Adobe Acrobat installed, we'll go ahead and add it in our remote apps program. So we'll just go ahead and say add remote app program next, and then we'll select Adobe Acrobat Reader next, finish, and then let's just look at its properties. And you'll see the alias is that right there. Let's just say, we'll just call this one Adobe. Uh, obviously, if you're using the Adobe Suite, don't use that as an alias, but uh, for today's video, this will be sufficient. We'll hit OK. So th that's pretty much it. We've deployed a brand new app after installing it on our server. So we'll go ahead, close out of our server, and come back into Terminal. Now, we would probably make a shortcut for our end users so they're not using Terminal, obviously. Um, but for today's purposes, I just kind of want to showcase the functionality. We'll hit Accept. And we'll just go ahead and close out of this. So here we are, we have Adobe Reader and this is all being streamed from our server. As you notice, there's a little bit of a hiccup there on the refresh rate, but that's just the translucent windows. Now what I could do is completely remove that window effect and that would go away. So I haven't quite tuned this server, but know that that is not a bug. That's just a window effect that I left on on the actual server itself. Uh, switching the server to not have the fancy fade and the gradient effects on the title bar would completely get rid of that. But the neat cool thing is we can come right back into here, go browse in our local files and use Adobe Acrobat directly on Linux and save right back into this folder. And this is all streamed via the server. So we're on Linux, but we're using Windows applications seamlessly. And this isn't anything new. This is a really old technology. It's just most people haven't seen it used like this. So that was the whole purpose of the demonstration here. So now that you got a general basis of what it looks like when you do app streaming in business, it's pretty darn powerful. There's a couple little caveats or gotchas there. Uh, sharing local resources can be a little tricky and, and that requires a good setup, but once it's set up, it's just there. And one of the other big powerful things is your users are kind of like in this new environment space, but 
it gives a lot of familiarity that they're used to when it comes to like Microsoft Office and a lot of these tools and functions they're used to. And also some businesses can't ever switch because of some of the line of businesses apps. And this actually fixes that as well. Now, you may have caught it in the intro there. One thing that I said was basically you got to watch. It's a hybrid setup with the end goal of completely switching over to Linux desktop. In the long term, I don't think this is a really long term type solution. Maybe for the Citrix solution, I would say so, because I know they're going to continue to at least support it. But the remote app seems like it's kind of being restricted and downsized and downplayed in recent years. So I don't anticipate this type of functionality to just can keep continuing on it may but at the same time it's not something I would a hundred percent rely on I would start this out with the intent of switching most of my workforce over to Linux desktop and having ulterior solutions in place so uh, as far as your line of business apps and those types of things pushing them to like a SaaS solution or software as a service in the cloud to where you'd access that uh, via web browser where most, most businesses, especially small businesses are already there. Um, but this is kind of what a general conversion would look like. And it, it's really exciting stuff and something that's not really new, but something that I thought I've never heard of anybody switching to Linux desktop and really leveraging this functionality, which is kind of sad because I mean, this is pretty old tech. I mean, we're talking 10 plus years old. So this isn't something completely new that hasn't been on the market. It's just I don't think anyone's ever really thought of it in this application. So with all that said, what do you think? And do you have a business that you're like, you know what, it'd be pretty cool if we could switch, but we're missing this one app functionality and this might get you there. Or do you think I'm just crazy? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you to all those that support the channel. It's much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.